Two. We return. Uh, oh, just as Jerry broke it off. My bad. Um, yes. Welcome back to part three of this week's Snow Snowocalypse as we build towards our dramatic. Uh, this the, yeah, I think we we're about to hit the last last session. It's very exciting. Um, cool. I have all my things in the right place. So we just saw a ghostly version of Empire collapse after trying to take the knife off you, and he said some ominously threatening things. What did we do, team? You're all just kind of standing around the McCraymobile. The mutant gorillas kind of cluss around you, like looking at you going, uh. Do we reckon those things still don't like explosives? You mean in the same way they didn't like thousands of years ago? I mean, they obviously don't like the knife that you guys acquired somehow. I'm not going to ask how. <laughs> but, uh... Do we reckon they also don't like explosives? Why? What are because, you planning on doing, Max? Well, otherwise we're driving in, and I'm going to be driving in, you're going to be like, drive me closer so I can hit them with my knife! And we it's can always be a bit just, awkward. Yeah, but, but I don't know exactly what we're going to do if we only have... They don't seem to like the knife. Yeah. And obviously Stein's power core's probably pretty dangerous, but that's in the car. And yeah. we have grenades. We, we don't do know, like... We have grenades. Yeah. I guess I could use, like, augury to kind of cloak the car. Yeah. I don't actually... Okay, sorry. I'm just going to open my brain to the psychic maelstrom, because that seems like a good thing to do. <laughs> what? Okay. This is, a, this is a smart place to do that in. Go for what? it. Why? Well, well, like, to find out if they are actually vulnerable to non... Psychic weapon. All right, so you're interrogating the males from kind of their vulnerabilities. Yes. All right. I do have a plus three on. Actually, I only have a, it's only a plus two. Yeah, you're sharp. So plus two. Roll it. Eh. Uh. Oh no, sorry. That's a, that's a, that should be a plus two rather than a minus one. Okay, uh, so, that so that's actually a ten. Ten. Okay, yeah. So you get something properly useful. Yeah. Um. I think the impression you get um, is like you feel something stirring in the like deeper in the storm, something, <laughs> and like it, it feels and smells wrong, um, and like you get the impression that this creature can't the empire just it it in of itself it is it isn't a thing it, it's essence pervades everywhere but like it's everywhere around you yet it can't do anything to you so this thing can't physically like can't directly affect you in the physical world unless you let it into your own brains um so if it wants to like kidnap you or force you to do something against your will it's going to need physical agents to push you in that direction which could be blown up with And I think your, like, logical connection is that, yeah, those things, if it, it's going to make a way to physically affect us, it's going to be physically affectable. Cool. <laughs> Alright. So we're going to go, guys, so here's what I think it's going to do. Like, we're going to... If there's going to be a big army of something that we're going to be able to blow the fuck out of, and I'm going to drive you close to Empire so that then you can hit it with your knife. And I think that's the way okay. we kill this thing. I'll try and cloak the vehicle to protect it from the physical maelstrom. I'm not sure how much that will do, but, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's a heavily armoured vehicle. We should be fine from any physical attacks. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we need to worry about that, unless... Um, the the issues are going to come with... Uh, and also, More specifically, each other we, need we to worry want about. him to... We need to find out... If we need him to volunteer, like, if we need to, like, force him to uh, return all people back to life in Cecil Road, or if just by killing him, it will do that automatically. Yeah, that, that, that's a hell of a what if. Because <laughs> obviously we don't want to kill him if we need him, but if we don't need him, then killing him is obviously the much easier option. 
this here is our dilemma. Yes. Um, I think midnight is your kind of like, I, I again assume just losing interest in the conversation. Yeah, you hear like, you know that thing where you hear the the wind whispers and you swear to God you hear it saying words or like whispering it. It unmistakably says the word death. It just death. And I get that that sort of sensation of like being like hit in the face by sleet with the sound of this voice. Um. I mean, Midnight's re initial reaction to that is, oh, fuck's sake, not again. <laughs> I'm I have to, like, die or nearly die in one year. I mean, seriously, can I not just get a fucking break every now and then? Um, one year. It's like a week. <laughs> okay, week, whatever. Um, you be nice, though. Yeah, um... I think, again, it, like, blows past and goes, You could live. You could serve us. Is this just aimed at me? No one else can hear this. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I think um, to get a, a slightly more clear, like, it's, it's speaking to you as if it's from at the end of a really long tunnel. Um, yeah. So what do you do in reaction to that? I sit there quietly in silence, hoping that it's just me going crazy. <laughs> um, Tempting to ignore it. Yeah, a louder, more forceful version after like uh, maybe 30 seconds of those two like kind of going, okay, right. Maybe more maps being studied while you're not in the really, really cold bit yet. And you get a, uh, answer us. What happens if I don't answer? It's gonna get mad. Like, yeah, you, you kind of half pay attention to Lux and she's like, yeah, I can't do anything in the real world. Other than talk. It's only when you cross the boundary between the real world and the psychic one, the realm of the soul, that it is a god. So yeah, it's kind of a, if, if, if Lux is right, you're fine. This is me basing the entire of this decision based on Lux. On whether Lux is right. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably this thing knows that we're probably going to fail. I'm telling you what it thinks. We're all going to die. <laughs> well, that, that, that is definitely what it's saying is going to happen. Okay, do I have to physically answer this thing, or can I just think I mean, something you, very You can loud. open your brain to the psychic maelstrom, you can... Speak out loud. You can see what's what. Let's open my brain to the psychic maelstrom. Because I know that's what you wanted. Why do you guys <laughs> keep doing this? <laughs> they can only hurt I, I, I like said you guys I did do it. it. Immediately aggressive day. I was like, okay, it's fine. I didn't fuck I up. Don't, I'm, I, I don't want to like. I'm not. I don't want to railroad people into decisions. But I mean, it's up to it's up to midnight. She can she can open her brain if she really wants. Like. It doesn't necessarily demand that you do that. It just says answer us, which is a pretty ambiguous terminology. Yeah, but if I if I if I start talking out loud, everyone else is going to think I'm fucking mental. I mean, I am, but <laughs> you have it helps when you have a, a soul transplant from a crazy, un like grease monkey scientist stitched into your body using these like stitches made out of the remnants of the soul of another human being. This is the equivalent of if you used a person's skin as a bandage. <laughs> your point being? In your soul. You're kind of fucked up anyway. But yeah, like... There we go then. All right. I'm still, I'm still opening my brain. Roll that weird. Rolling that weird. Um... Nine. Okay, so a vague... It's a good weird roll for me. Yeah. Um, because normally you're at minus two, right? Yeah. So if you hadn't got your buff, that would be a six. And bad shit would happen. Um, yeah, so I think you get this... Um... So, okay, first of all, what's it like when Midnight opens her brain now? Like, How does it look and slash or feel? Because we've so, never seen Midnight do this. We haven't, no. This is all At least not successfully. She did it once <laughs> and failed and immediately got taken over by Rachel. 
and then we launched into the last big bullshit arc. You <laughs> have to go back to that, don't you? I make one shitty mistake and one shitty roll, and it's just. Oh, don't it's worry. All everyone the else is. I mean, the, like everyone here has made certain shitty mistakes. One person got bitten by a wolf that turned him into a turned her into a cat person. One person. Yeah, episode I shot one. Caught, the face ah, and yeah. One person made a genocide engine. One person, yes, but I shot one person myself. went on a murder spree. But I, I shot think... myself in the face and failed. What are you on about? My Tudor's been played every move perfectly. Your Tudor's in, well. The, the only reason you played every move is you physically can't roll badly. <laughs> Have you failed a roll yet? I failed yeah. a sharp roll at the very start. There we go. And I think that's it. Did fail? No, you did fail a roll last episode that then uh. led to me failing more rolls when I tried to fix it. Yeah, I fa yeah, yeah. Fair. All right, yeah. So, uh, so you know, what's what's it like when you open your mind? The maelstrom to midnight. It doesn't feel like the maelstrom. It just feels like she's transported herself into you, just like, a different place. It feels almost physical rather. Are than you physical. are you back in the bedroom? Not back in the bedroom as as, as so much. She's um, she's just in this massive fuck off palace thing. That she can just do whatever. Oh, does she it wants. does it look like a kind of poor man's copy of of Tudor's old one? Because that's how you know the maelstrom works. Yeah, kind of. Okay, I, I'm I'm curious. Just or it might it might just be like maybe it's your that yeah, office that what what's her name CEO Midnight uh, was in. I I don't know. I just or hell, it could be weird surreal bullshit if you fancy it. We've we've played games before where someone risks offers like the Sherlock word thing. Oh, they see the universe. What? Who oh, would do that? Sounds super unoriginal. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So yeah, you're in. Um... Yeah, and like, so you kind of open your eyes, and you're in this, um, this like palace thing. Um, and I think yeah, this this you get pulled in this weird like um, jerky like you know the the way the the girl from the ring moves. Imagine you were first person of that. Mo like being pulled down these corridors until you get to this like side room that the door like swings open as you get to it and um out um like this little snow drift blows in before like it's followed by kind of this ghost this like f ghostly white foot wreathed in a kind of co cold blue flame and all around it like the, the everything illuminated by this flame is like leached of its color um, and just kind of turns to like cold and, and, and grey and yeah in strides through this door strides Empire and um, yeah like this this kind of light covers across you and you feel your mind get riffled through for a moment as if it, it, it takes your um, yeah uh, it takes your measure and it kind of tilts its head and uh, I guess you, you'll have to work out whether you've been found wanting and, um, see, we need Tudor alive and that knife separate from him. There will be a moment. Bring him to us and we will spare you. We will make you queen of this world. You have entered a new realm. You can perceive us. Well done. What do you say? Will you choose them and death? Or us and something beyond life? I think Midnight kind of pauses for a minute and is very much thinking this through. She's definitely not the kind of person to just immediately take something because it sounds so fancy and it sounds something that, that she wants. And she just kind of turns and, you know, wanders around for a minute or two and then just thinks, why the fuck would I want to be the queen of this place? This doesn't seem like a cool deal. So she turns and she says out loud to Empire, mm -hmm. What's Tudor got to do with this anyway? He is our key. We have spent years crafting him, 
shaping him. He, he will unlock our final potentials. We will sweep across this world. We will be all under the Empire. Our Empire. So you're saying if I give you Tudor, every place in the world turns into this shitty snowstorm? It doesn't answer. We do not need to explain ourselves to you. Well, if you're going to make me the queen of this place, then I kind of want some info before I accept the deal. You may choose death and the hard way for all of us. Or you may choose a better role and the easy way. We have looked through your life, Midnight. Um, what... Did your, like, parents call you Midnight? Was that a name you assumed when you kind of... Because I think we discussed you, you... Your parents died and you came to Cecil Road after that. What What did your parents... Did your parents call you Midnight or did you have another name before that? No, I had another name before that. Yeah, they call you that. You You have been running ever since that day you've taken the easy way we can see it take the easy way again you have manipulated lied and slept your way into the beds of power we are offering you power itself all you have to do is betray one more man and really when has that been a problem for you See, I like to betray people when I have some sort of benefit come out of it, and when it's my conscious decision to do it. It so holds up a hand. Me, from what and, you're telling me, uh, I can't see any benefit from this whatsoever. Very well. We will watch you die in pain. We will torture you for an eternity. You will know our agent when you see him. I believe he referred to you as Princess. And, uh, yeah, like, you are immediately booted back into the real world. Um, as the light, like, flares up, and, like, the, as the spots clear from your eyes, you're back in the, uh, the snowstorm. Um, kind of, I guess, like, you're all, like, squatting inside the hospital at the moment. Um, just letting the car, like, while well, the car kind of gets refueled and things like that. Um, yeah. Okay, team. So, have you guys been... I, I presume you guys have been discussing uh, the map and the routes and what the hell yeah. you're going to do with all that jazz. Pretty much. Cool. So, team, give me the plan. We drive in, <laughs> kill everything, and, and then stab it with a knife. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah, so I think... Um, Can yeah, I get like... a plus two on acting on everything under that plan? <laughs> Um, yeah, so I think you, uh, so what happens is, is you start driving, and, um... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. I want to try and use augury on the car first. Okay, what's your intention? To... one sec. To isolate, isolate and protect a thing from the world's psychic. The world's psychic maelstrom, so like the maelstrom cannot reach into the car. Yeah. Um... Well, I mean, I can do it, I'm sure Empire can break it. I want to try. Yeah, I'm just trying to. Th I'm trying to figure out like what that serves as. Like, Augury is a weird move because it's always a little like I don't really know what the mechanical bullshit of all this is. Um, more armor against way, anything psychic. Is there any way for Stein to assist Tudor on that? Considering he has the savvy. Abs knowledge. You can absolutely assist with that. Um, that is definitely a thing that you know how to assist with. Um, uh, so is it is it noticeable like what Tudor's doing? Or? I think yeah, definitely. Tudor using augury is it. yeah. Tudor using augury is in no way a subtle process. Like it's okay. full on, like the the stigmata on his forehead starts glowing and all this shit. Um, okay, so Tudor, um, are you isolating the engine or? I was just gonna do the whole vehicle. Oh, the whole yeah. vehicle. Okay, yeah, that's cool. Oh, um, oh. Yeah, roll it's, it's your hex with Tudor. I, uh, should I roll first? Uh, wait. That's uh, probably best. I'm trying to think. Is it D6 plus? You know, well, we'll do that because you're like you're both going into this, so we'll roll the assist first, and then we'll roll the the second. Okay. Because both rolls have to happen, and this way drama. 
Yeah, 2d6 plus your hex with uh, with Tudor. Okay, cool. Ten. You do it. That's a plus one for Tudor. So roll your augury. I know, roll. Um, okay, plus another one, pick fair. it up. Um, so, oh, uh, Jamie, your camera just switched off. Sorry about that. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, so... Uh, Tempest. Presumably stable and contain no bleeding and persist without active maintenance? Sick. I, I presume. You may want to change that, I don't know. But yeah, okay, um, yeah, there's like... I'd, uh, I'd, no, I would, I would, in fact, no, I would advise no, no. you want it... You probably... You're fine uh, maintaining it for now, because the whole point is... It's your You'll be in the car yeah. able to maintain stable it. Stable and contain. Uh, and then you probably want it deep. deep. Yeah, yeah, to protect stable it against... Yeah, so I think the kind of the way that it requires maintenance is that if it comes under a psychic barrage, um, you will I'll be required to, to like yeah, if like in a in a, if we're in a fight, you will be required to spend your action like acting under fire to hold the shield up, or uh, it'll actually fire with your weird to hold the shield up. Once it breaks, then you're free from that. But then again, psychic stuff can get in. Uh, that's that's I think what I'll say. You're basically generating a, a shield with your brain. Woohoo! Um, okay. Because my, my tank wasn't tanky enough. Yeah, make a note of that somewhere. Um, just on your sheet. Uh, okay. Please, Tudor. Um, and yeah, so... Yeah, this kind of like bright, bright blue like sheen. Uh, or maybe that sheen is... Yeah, I think it's now like a... This bluish, like blackish bluish colour. Um, kind of like ink stains or something like that covers over like the surface of the car for a moment and then like fades into invisibility um and yeah you, you start driving off and you see like uh like the temperature like a thermometer thing you've got on the outside starts like recording lower and lower temperatures uh the windows start like uh frost starts building up on them um yeah stein indicates like all right and there's another button on the side, and you hit it, and you hear like a sort of a soft, and the windows just start thawing, and you just see like um, kind of like uh, uh, I think just under through like little vents in the in the top of the hood, you just see like lights shining through, as the engine like cycles up, um, and yeah, the storm does doesn't bother you anyway, and uh, yeah, you crest like a giant hill, and you see this maze of like buildings sticking up through the surface of the snow um, ahead of you. Uh, and you see th the city of London stretching out before you. Um, uh, yeah, I think you can just see like uh, maybe an overground train track, like one train sitting lonely on it, kind of like lilting off to the sides. Um, A very uh, dark tower. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> I didn't even know I was going for that, but that's good. That's good. Um, but yeah, the snow does seem to kind of like, is, is definitely ramping downwards. Like you could only see the tops of buildings and things like that before. And this is ramping downwards into the, into a depression. And you, you can't physically see more than like, um, uh, that far into it because even though you're right above it, because the center is just covered in this like thick white fog, uh, that you would guess is the final, like, that's the innermost section and where it's going to get real cold. Um, and yeah, what the the player the the player characters don't see, but we all do, because mm -hmm. we're audience members. Is um, yeah, we kind of zoom away from the car, and it rushes towards some of these buildings, and um, we kind of zoom into one. Um, maybe a, tr a train station or something, and we see like maybe the body of a uh, of a train driver or a, a tube passenger. It's like, uh, we 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 catch like um yeah like a tube carriage with a uh, with a sort of people in it. There's a few like commuters just like frozen in place. Um, a couple people like sitting on the sides. Um, and this little kid holding like a person's hand. And then we just see around this kid's uh, like eyes like this soft blue light starts to glow behind their eyes. And the ice cracks, and we see like ancient flesh that's been preserved by the ice, like moves. The ice snaps off of it, and then it kind of pans back outwards, and we see these soft blue lights illuminating behind the eyes of assorted pass, like a bunch of the passengers in here. And then we cut to black. And we'll pick this up again next week. Yeah, and when you were panicking about snow zombies, 
Now is the time to panic about snow zombies. I'm not panicking about snow zombies. I'm panicked about the dragon that we made you include in this world. <laughs> oh dear. A dragon! Do you not remember the first episode, Chip, when we insisted that dragons exist in this realm? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Why did you remind him of this? He totally forgot. Because I want about a fucking dragon. <laughs> I mean, oh, also, no. I am no longer worried about ice zombies. Right? We have as the equipment to deal with ice zombies. Even if there's enough ice zombies to round up the population of London? Hey, man, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> My grenade Pippa. launcher has the area tag. Uh huh, uh huh. Okay. I can just open a portal underneath them. Uh huh. Yeah. Again, one big enough to cover the entirety of London and directly resisting the will of your uh, your dear creator. We'll see. We'll course, see. Of course. But if before I roll we get into 15s, that, I can do whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> before we get into that, um, let's do some hex. So, uh, let's start with. I went for my overlay. Uh, Stein. Who knows Stein better, and for why? Oh, it, that's for me to decide, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with Lux on this one because I think that was ge uh, genuinely a, uh, a a step forward in rebuilding a friendship there. Um, yeah. I think Lux genuinely appreciated this. <laughs> like, yeah. I took yeah. a thing that's worth a small fortune and I put it in your car. <laughs> yeah. No. I think you 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 boost Lux's cars. Lux is happy with you. Seems fair. Yeah. And if you live like through this and get back to your other cars then you know they're all done up as well not as souped but still yeah, you know uh, only the leader's car gets that souped yeah, yeah. um all right Tudor, who knows you better and why well i'd say stein we we've worked together after our loggerheads meaning we actually had a sensible conversation during planning that did yeah. not involve us both trying to kill each other fair yeah, okay, I like it. I like it. Mark one pl plus one hex with Tudor then Stein. And obviously up to plus one with a uh, with a uh, Stein for you, Lux. Um yep. Lux, who knows you better and for why? Um I'm gonna go with Stein. Okay. Uh who knows me better because well he fixed my car and I was a bitch. like I kind of forgot temporarily forgot about the whole fact that he killed an entire town. Just because he fixed my car, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. She, that, that he long. knows. He knows that it's a like. He knows that like basically it's like. Whereas the stomach is the route to, to uh, most people's hearts. That your your engines, are, yeah, are the route to your yours. Gear stick. So, <laughs> what? When you your handle the gear stick, that's what, that's that's what looks all about. Top fucking notch. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, it, is it plus four or is it? Rounded to plus one now. Uh, so if you hit plus four, uh, mark yeah. an XP and take it back to plus one. Got it. Uh, that actually levels me up as well. Okay, we'll have a think about what you want to take. Sick. And finally, Midnight. Who knows you better and for why? Tudor, because he saw the weird fucking Rachel lookalike me in the tube. Fair. Um, yeah. Nice. Cool. We figured out that Rachel looks a lot like me. Yeah. Which is... Yeah. I think. Be weird. Yeah. I would agree to that. Cool. Uh, mark one pl plus one hex with midnight. Shoot that. Um, Alright, does anyone have any advances that they would like to spend in this moment? Uh, Stein, you said you do. Is that your sixth? Um, I believe it is. One, two, three, four. That'll be five. Yeah, I can't see. You took charismatic. You took infirmary. You took deep insight. Uh, I also and took plus your... one on hard and plus one on weird. Yeah, yeah. Plus one hard. The plus on weird was from your another move from your play. But yes, yeah, so this is your fifth. I think I miscounted. I think I did five weird rolls this game. Uh, have a look through. Yeah. Uh, the uh, the first roll Classic of Tudor just farming XP. First roll of this game was uh, you rolled a nine on a weird roll. One, two. Uh, then again, didn't you roll? Because your direct brain whisper projection doesn't count because it was a uh, that was technically a hard roll. Uh, that was what confused me. Yeah. I'm so what are you? Uh, have you got an idea of what you want to take right uh, right now, uh, Jamie? Or will we leave that to tell people about next session? Uh, we may well have to leave that for next session because uh, my internet's playing up a little bit. Uh, Hexwise, books. 
We need to take over to four before we get another XP point, yes. right? Yes. Once it hits four, it takes over to one. You get a new thing. Cool. Uh, cool. So no one else is leveled. Wonderful. Um, Linda needs to roll more dice if she wants to get levels. Can't say. Yeah. Gotta try. Gotta try and manipulate some ghost people. Roll a whiskey. Um, <laughs> or just just try and bang some ghost people. I don't know. Whatever you want to do. Um. Cool. Well, apparently right. I'm going to die soon anyway, so what does it even matter? Well, I mean, the, the kind of threat is that you're all going to die. Not so much specifically. Well, then what does XP have to do with anything? <laughs> well, that's, it helps you avoid dying. Um, <laughs> Alright. Cool. Let's whip through, uh, do some shout-outs, and wrap this session up. So, Jamie, shout-out away. Uh, yeah. This is the strangest thing, shouting out to, uh, I believe, two people? Maybe three? Um, <laughs> uh, people watch this on YouTube. Don't worry Yeah, this is true. This is true. Um, so, yeah. Shout out to, uh, to everyone who's, who's kept up with us uh, 11 weeks in. Uh, it's been fun. I hope it's been fun for you guys, too. If it hasn't been, why are you still watching week 11? But, anyway. Um, There's going to be some people way down the line who just really want to complain. That's it. They really want to complain. The thing is, they'll want to complain when they watch this episode, but they'll count. I think we have a total of. Let me just do a quick counter. Uh, 15 hats on currently. So I don't think you've got. So we're here. winning. <laughs> yep. There are four winning. people wearing 15 hats. So if you don't like the show, then just think about that. Um, but yeah. We're drawing to a conclusion, and hopefully, uh, we'll you'll see it through with us. Cool. Um, Joe. My well, guess. Um, shout out to anyone that's got this far on YouTube. Hats are great. Night. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you as always. Uh, Johnny. That's all. Uh, shout out to me not failing any rolls this session. I got that all out of my. System last time, so we're moving into the finale where I'm going to ace every single roll. Aren't uh -huh. I, Roll 20 devs? Just channel me. I believe in you, Roll 20. Don't fail me. Also, uh, I'm gonna let you finish, but I have the best hats of all time. No, you don't. You're the worst. <laughs> I have a motherfucking uh, panda hat. Go fuck yourself. Is that um, not hello. a raccoon? Luffy's straw hat? Oh, you fucking weeaboo. That impresses no one. You fucking weeaboo. I'm wearing a hat that doesn't even fit on the hat I'm wearing it on. I'm wearing a controller as a hat. what she said? Cap. And this marvellous thing. Hey, I had two makeup brushes and a hairbrush in my bit here for like half an hour, so... Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> on that, Chip, your shoutouts please. Um, shout out to everybody that's watching on YouTube. Um, well done for soldiering through. Um, shout out to the very few people who are still watching with chat. We know it was. And also, Geeky, my lovely mod, who's just doing all the things in the chat. I love you. Awesome. You're great. You're great. You're great. Shout out to Geeky, because Geeky's amazing. Yeah. Um, Wonderful yeah. mod people. We're getting that. And also, you, Wingy, even though you aren't in this stream at the moment, because you watch this on YouTube, because you're behind. You're still cool, and I still appreciate you. Getting Sorry. close, guys. Yes. Midnight's There's... various attempts to kill herself may actually pay off. So <laughs> you never uh, know; it could happen. <laughs> the most crazy suicidal person ever. Fingers. Ah oh, dear. Fingers right. Crossed. Okay. So I'll round this out then. Uh, yes, we'll be back hopefully next week, although I've heard there are certain people who might be very busy in the next few coming weeks, so stay tuned to my assorted social media uh, to keep on top of when the next one will be. I will try and announce it. I will try and sort out a date for the next one sooner, and I will also try and get the VODs up sooner. If you're watching this and it's the day of the show, the next show, I failed. Um, yes, uh, I will now post in the chat the Reddit link. Uh, for this one, if you're watching on YouTube, it's down in the description below. Go there, ask me questions, vote on stats, do all of that cool shit. Um, and yeah, come back for the next one. Also, if you're about an avid stream watcher, there's some exciting announcements, including a proper, proper defined regular schedule, 
and also um, some interesting collaborations with some cool people coming up in the future. So stay tuned. And some of those will be role-playing game related. Beautiful. Uh, all right. That's all for us. Tara, Avoid the drizzle. Don't do anything we wouldn't do. Bye.